Welcome back to the Wolf of Queen Street podcast. T- today on the show, Regan Green, a podcast host and a holistic training and performance coach, and also uh, someone I would say that is one of the youngest looking 30-year-olds or 30-ish people out there. I keep looking at your content and I keep going like, dude, you look like you're 18 in those photos. And that was like last week or last month and, you know, in the style and everything else. Um, and you also run the Second Wind podcast and community. We'll get a bit into that as well about what that is about and why you launched it and everything else. But uh, Regan, welcome to the show. Mate, you've just made my day. Oh, <laughs> fucking 18, geez. Oh, I don't know how much truth is behind that, but uh, I'll take it. You take it. Yeah. No, look, uh, like I said, I looked a bit of your content. Anyone goes and looks there and sees and goes, man, um, these, you know, those photos are pretty good, man. <laughs> it comes across. <laughs> take, 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 the, take the good uh, genetics, right? Oh, Great across you. camera. Yeah, my head just grew a couple inches. But <laughs> thank you, buddy. <laughs> uh, just, uh, just as a sort of a, uh, um, an interesting one, does it feel a bit weird? So to anyone else that's watching or listening, Regan actually uses the exact studio for his own content when he runs his own podcast. Uh, uh, just as a random question, is it ever weird? Is this weird to you right now, being on the other side of the table in a studio that you've used? Yeah, it's really weird. I mean, I'm I'm on the same side because I always sit on this side, so that's so, nice. There's yes. a bit of there's a bit of comfort there, but yeah, having the different logo up on the screen is uh, quite 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 unusual. But um, <laughs> as I said before, it's really nice. I felt nice and relaxed coming here. Don't have to worry about writing questions or keeping an eye on the time. <laughs> nah, I'm, I'm chill. Uh, awesome. So, um, but yeah, let's let's take a bit of a, a backstory into yourself. Uh, you know, what's where you've come from, what you've gone through, and everything else. Obviously, you got your training and performance side of that, but there's a bit of a, a further backstory uh, about your your mental health challenges, and then obviously the uh, you know Constable Matthew Hunt. Mm-hmm. Um, that I think anyone in New Zealand or even wider, maybe in Austra- Australasia, would have known. Uh, around um, uh, his loss, he, um, him being killed in, uh, what is it, uh, 20, 2020 20, yeah. um, in West Auckland. Um, and so I'd love to know a little bit about your backstory. Yeah, I mean, how far back do you want me to start? Um, I know you, you, you've spoken about before, you know, uh, coming through a bit of uh, getting in, finding yourself with some mental health challenges just about just before that moment, right, mm. or around there. So take yeah. me through sort of a year before that that happened. Yeah, yeah, you, you you bang on there. You've done your research. Um, I I was already looking for um, ways to look after my mental health. Mm-hmm. Um, it actually came about when I had my first kid. Mm-hmm. Um, I realised that I did have a bit of an anger issue. I was quite highly strung. Um, had a bit of a short fuse. Not saying that all of that has completely gone, mm-hmm. but over the last three years, I've done a hell of a lot of work and uh, improved a hell of a lot. But yeah, a year before losing Matt, um, yeah, I suppose like a, yeah, like I said, I was already trying to work on myself. Mm-hmm. But yeah, no, I was I was happy guy, just um, classic Kiwi fella. I've j- just came back from two years in London with Matt, mm-hmm. actually. Um, just starting to start my own family. Um, I'd actually gone back to uni. I was, I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do in the world. Yep. Um, yeah, and then I guess that moment that in 2020 just kind of flipped my world upside down, I suppose. Before we get into that moment, because yeah. I want to spend some time on that, um, if you're happy to share on that, is yeah, yeah, no the, the bit of the a- a- aggression and hot-headedness. This was already happening before that moment. Yeah. Is what you're saying you, you're fine in a bit of that. Yeah. Is, was there anything through childhood or was there anything that was triggering you through that to be a, a, you know, a bit of a hothead person or is that <laughs> upbringing? Yeah, bro. Um, I've, I've done a lot of therapy <laughs> and a lot of unpacking, so I know exactly where it came from. Yep. I know all the moments um, and, and I've shared them on my, my podcast, so mm-hmm. why not share them here too? Um, yeah, I guess... The main ones, because there's there's a few, you know, mm. like we're kind of the byproducts of our environment. Yep. Like every single thing that happens to us is, you know, has an effect and, and creates this person we are today. Um, so, yeah, I suppose I grew up on the farm with my mm. dad and uh, he grew up on the farm with his dad. And, yeah, they were pretty classic farmer <laughs> dads, you know, um, I suppose not. A lot of I love yous. Mm-hmm. Um, not a lot of leeway. Yeah, not a lot of leeway. Um, they were, yeah, a bit rough or a bit, you know, rough around the edges. Mm-hmm. Classic farmer, Kiwi bloke, dad, yep. you know. Um, hey, everyone, sorry for the interruption. Just a quick shout out from my sponsors. 
My name is Kenyon Clark, and I'm the founder of the Duval Group. We are a large-scale property developer, and alongside our property development business, we also have our gym business based in Manico and with new locations opening soon. We're passionate about serving our community, and we do that through the Duval Foundation, and I hope that we are able to be a voice of encouragement and inspiration for a whole new generation of entrepreneurs. Let's get back to the show. And then uh, my relationship with my older brother, who now we're like we're, we're best mates, mm -hmm. um, but he kind of tormented me a little bit. Um, he was 10 years older, so during board games yeah. or uh, knee rugby in the lounge or whatever, <laughs> I would I'd get very wound up. Um, and, yeah, lots of little things like that, but I kind of think almost most importantly, I was actually – I remember – I guess being told or referred to as someone who was um, highly strung or mm -hmm. someone who had a short fuse. And it kind of became my identity. Mm -hmm. And I kind of just took that on. Um, and I thought that's who I was. And I suppose it wasn't until that sort of year leading up to the loss of Matt where, and, and I guess, like I said, when having kids made me like, actually question it and yeah. actually look at myself and go, well, hang on, like, is that who I am? Like, am I, oh, like, why am I highly strung? Mm -hmm. Why am I losing the plot in a game of bloody Monopoly? Yep. You know, and it's because of all this, like, past, I don't want to say trauma mm -hmm. because, you know, losing Matt, like, that was trauma. Yeah. Um, past events, <laughs> we'll say. Yeah. Uh, it's always an interesting one because, you know, I've, I go through a few hot-headed moments myself. I still, I still struggle with it a little bit myself myself now uh, mm. due to my surgery and my brain surgery a good few years ago. So I get um, – my hormones get in balance. I go up and down. Um, but I was always – when I was 16 as well, I was a very hot-headed kid um, mm. to go out there. But it was a bit of a upbringing, but not from a – let's say bad parenting upbringing it was a weird of it was like a south african upbringing so it was like mm. you've got to focus you've got to strive you've got to become the best if anyone's in in your way you've got to get them out the way mm. so you were literally ready to go to war every day for what you wanted to try and achieve so and if you couldn't control it it would you know get out of it would just get out of whack right mm. um so you had this this like testosterone running through you continuously um, as, as a late teen. And unfortunately with a bit of a, my condition now, I see myself that 17 year old comes out, you know, every couple of months or so. And unfortunately to my kids and my, my wife, mm -hmm. they get the brunt of it. But, but it took a quite a while for myself to learn. I can imagine with yourself what it is, how it feels. And now sort of like my family realize that. So they would literally take themselves away from me. Mm -hmm. So I'll get into that moment and the wife will go to the kids like, okay, dad's just having one of his, you know, our soul moments, moments, inverted yeah. commas, yeah. Uh, leave him alone. And that, they know that now. I mean, before, you know, a couple of years ago, when my boy was still a bit younger, he didn't understand of, hey, dad doesn't want to cuddle you for this minute or dad mm. doesn't want to hold you for this minute because he's really wind up and stuff. But it's just, mm. you know, working through it. Yeah. You know, you, do you feel, do you still feel, because how old's your kids? I know you've got one of, one of each. Yeah, so my boy, he's four. Mm -hmm. um, and we've got a girl who's a year and a half as yeah, well. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Fun yeah. ages. Yeah, it is. Uh, we're in the, I like to say we're in the trenches at the moment. <laughs> it is uh, very hard work. Yeah. Uh, and they make you grow up really yeah. quickly and, and in my case do a lot of uh, self-reflection. Mm -hmm. But wouldn't change it for the world, eh? I fucking love being a dad. It's, yeah. it's the best thing. And I say to all my mates that don't have kids, I'm like, I'm like, Boys, you know, like, as you know, mm -hmm. the hardest things that you do in life are the most rewarding. Yeah. And it couldn't be more true with kids. Oh, yeah, kids. Um, uh, it's so true. You know, my um, my my daughter's 14, my son's um, 11, you know. So it's like I feel like there's like two or three years left and my, then my daughter's finished with school, right, and mm -hmm. goes varsity in love. And it's just like, yeah, so it's enjoy. Like I'll do anything for them to go back to that you know, that four, five, six, seven, where they become yeah. their own little person running around and everything yeah. else. Um, I was I was watching a video just the other day um, of a South African comedian and he was having a bit of a joke and me and the family were having a laugh and going, the kids today are literally kind of growing up in school and they're coming up with questions that you just don't understand as a parent. And I see that today. My son will oh, come yeah. home and ask, Dad, hey, how does this work? Or how does that work? Or, and you just go, 
how the hell am I supposed to know? Yeah, oh, yeah. Like, did I ever, was I ever taught mm. this at school? Did yeah, I ever yeah. know this? And they're like, no, they're teaching us. And so there's just days that my 11 year old makes me feel like I'm dumb. Mm. At my, yeah. my, and I went to private schooling. Like I was luck, uh, lu- lucky enough to have private schooling back in South Africa. I went to pretty decent school. And I'm like, I can't understand this mm. or get this or struggle. Yeah, it's <laughs> with such some a of the different stuff. World, eh? Yeah, they, pretty much. They're gonna grow up with, uh, like you know, grow up with Google and now <laughs> Chat GPT. Like yeah. they've got all the knowledge in their pocket. It's yeah, it's quite scary, eh? But. I'm looking forward to those days. <laughs> oh, it's gonna it's gonna be the way of the future. They how they do it and everything else. And um, you know, yeah, it'll be an interesting one because they're obviously the first generation, or, or they're part of the you know Gen Z generation that's grown up fully on tech and see how that affects them going out compared mm. to um, um, you know millennial like myself that was in a transition, right? Mm. Yeah, you you pretty much on the close. You on the yeah. You're on the close, right? Are you, are you on the I, boundary of Gen and me? Gen Z and millennial, right? Yeah, I think we just sneak in millennial. Um, but hold on to that side. Don't come the other way. <laughs> yeah, I always say like I because I've got siblings who are sort of uh, six, eight, and ten years younger than me. Oh yeah. Um, obviously three of them, and I always say to them that like I just snuck in the good side. Yeah. Um, before like growing up with a phone and technology yeah. and social media and all that, and I see them and it and it has like you can kind of see that it's. They've grown up different, you know. Mm-hmm. They've grown up, um, I suppose, with a bit more, I think, a bit more stress and a bit more things to worry about and all the comparison, mm-hmm. you know, all the toxic side of, of social media. Yes, there's there's positives yep. to it. But, but yeah, I like to say I kind of just snuck in there uh, where uh, you knew where your friends were mm-hmm. by where all the bikes were parked, and, you <laughs> yeah. know, which house the bikes were parked. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's. We'll go, we'll go back on the story. I know we're diverging a little bit, but um, there's one. There's one of those funny things that, in the invention of a cell phone, was the creation of the word or the the question, "Where are you?" Oh yeah. Before cell phone, <laughs> you never asked a person, "Where are you?" Yeah, true. Fundamentally, because if you phone, if you phone from A to B, you could only phone yeah, from A to B, and, there, and it was always a landline, right? True. So and you're except not write in a letter. Letter. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so unless someone was from a pay booth, right? It was always you always knew. Where someone else was, yeah, um, and I remember, I remember growing up in that situation. We were like, oh, okay, I'm going to go and find Green, Green Oregon and see if he's home. And you'd go to your house, you wouldn't be there, and you go, cool. I wonder if he's in the neighborhood, and you would walk the neighborhood or you'd ride the neighborhood yeah, yeah, to yeah. see if you could find someone. And that's how you to yeah. see if we could hang out, right? Yeah, that was totally, that was yeah. that was the options. Yeah, yeah. You just had to be super planned, eh? Like, or planned, or just uh, yeah. or super lucky, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, and yeah, to see if you're yeah. down the street. Oh, there he comes. Oh, yeah, lucky. Yeah, you yeah. want to hang out? Yeah. Compared to you know, realizing um, and seeing everyone else. Yeah, jeez, we sound like two old men. Buddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, uh, yeah. I, I've got a bit of, I've got a bit of, yeah. uh, a bit of age. Yeah, like I said, uh, uh, you still a young lad. Um, I'm, I'm holding on to my thirties just uh, <laughs> for now, just. Nice. But yeah, and so it goes. Um, so yeah, so let, let's go bring it back around. Obviously, you know, um, we're coming up to 2020, and talk me through as much as you're willing around mm. uh, around Matt. Um, there'll be a lot of people that'll be aware of it. Mm. Um, if you're happy, I'd love for you to talk through how it went, what happened, and mm. all the rest of it, just to bring more awareness yeah. and you know, and to respect Matt and let his you know his life still live on. Yeah, man. I honestly, I love talking about Matt. Eh? Mm-hmm. It uh, keeps his name alive and it's, it's a bit of therapy for mm-hmm. me and, and yeah, I love it. Eh? So I'm happy to answer any question you have around Matt. Yep. Um, I guess, yeah, it, it left me with a broken heart. Mm-hmm. Um, it's left a big gaping hole in my life and, and I just miss the bloke every single day. Yeah. So talk me through, uh, w- when it happened and everything else, just for the for the audience that might not know about yeah. Constable Matthew Hunt and what happened. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, Constable Matthew Hunt, uh, my best friend, uh, he was shot dead, murdered um, on the nineteenth of June, twenty twenty, um, while he was policing out in Massey. Um, That's all right, bro. Um, yeah, I mean, it was it was senseless and shouldn't have happened and it was unfair and I wish it didn't happen to him <laughs> and and yeah, like I said, it's left me angry and sad and 
yeah, there's 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 all sorts of emotions that it's left me with. Um, I guess from a positive point of view, mm-hmm. it's it's also left me with this incredible drive um, and ambition to to help others with their mm-hmm. mental and physical health. But yeah, it's it's shit, man. It's mm-hmm. it's shit. Um, it was recently his birthday, mm-hmm. just a couple yep. on Sunday, mm-hmm. and it was still such a hard day for me. You know, um, after over three years now, it's it's still a very tough to, pill to swallow. And and yeah, like I said though, I'm I'm willing to answer any question <laughs> about him because because. Because I love him, and and mm-hmm. he he was such a good bloke, and and I actually I always say like I hate the saying couldn't happen to a better bloke mm-hmm. because it's like an understatement for Matt. Like he honestly like just would never hurt a fly. Like literally every single person loved him. He would talk to you and like with respect and and give you your inte- uh, his attention. Sorry, no matter who you were, and. He was actually quite not shy, but mm-hmm. um, I guess he didn't speak a hell of a lot. But yeah. when he did, it was worth listening to. Mm-hmm. He was just the best bloke. Like you know, like I mean, it's easy to sit here and say this, but I I honestly reckon like he was destined for big things. Eh? Mm-hmm. Um, you look at his career that he had. Um, he worked in the courts. He studied criminology mm-hmm. first. Sorry. And worked in the courts. He worked as a case manager in the prisons, mm-hmm. um, and then obviously became a police officer. And everyone in the police force just talked so highly of mm-hmm. him. Um, the incredible stories that came out afterwards, like from people who he had dealt with. Mm-hmm. Like I honestly wouldn't put it past him if he went on to become, you know, the commissioner or something. Mm-hmm. Although he would have hated all the public <laughs> speaking, so probably not. Because <laughs> he was known as quite a quiet guy, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he was he was a bit quiet. Um, when it was just like us, you know, me and the lads, mm-hmm. um, and Matt was there, and we were watching the footy or something. He'd he'd pipe up a lot. Yeah. He'd he'd come out with a lot of zingers. Yeah. Uh, he was quite witty. Um, or if it was just him and I, you know, him and I did two years in Europe and London mm-hmm. together. Um, and man, like. Yeah, it's hard because everyone always says to me, like, oh, isn't it so great you have those memories? And it is. Like, it is awesome. Like, I love having those memories, but... It's not, it's not worth the trade, right? Lawrence, I've, I feel fucking robbed, man. Yeah. I feel robbed. Like, like he's my best mate. Like, I was meant to grow mm-hmm. old with him. I was mm-hmm. meant to, you know, take up golf in our 50s and bowls <laughs> in our 70s. <laughs> our kids were meant to grow up yeah. together. Like, and I'm robbed of that. So what happened with the, the the person that shot him or killed him, sorry? Um he's in prison. Mm-hmm. We we went through the whole court system with him. Mm-hmm. Um so yeah, I mean anyone can look it up mm-hmm. um and and see all the details about it. But yeah, we went through the whole thing. So I literally sat, you know, twenty meters from the guy. Mm-hmm. Um had to Look at him in the eyes. One second, sorry. <coughs> sorry, man. Good. Fuck, you didn't got edits, eh? <laughs> I usually leave most of mine in. Oh, do you? Yeah, authentic. And where was I? Caught sitting 20 minutes from me. And we actually had to listen to the bloke. Uh, plead not guilty for mm-hmm. the murder um, of Matt because he was trying to get away with like I don't I can't honestly I've kind of blocked it mm-hmm. but I, so I can't I won't get this completely accurate but basically he was trying to plead like manslaughter mm-hmm. like it was a mistake yeah but man like all the evidence like there was. It blew us away how much footage there was. Mm -hmm. Like, there was so many people home (laughs) when, you know, had, I don't know, there must have been cameras on the street. Mm -hmm. There was people's phone footage. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, so we, like, there was nothing that was left up to the imagination, eh? We know exactly what happened, and we saw exactly Mm -hmm. what happened. Um, 
and yeah, it went through the courts. It was um, through a jury, mm-hmm. which yeah, I don't know. Seemed it was honestly, I felt like I was in a movie. Eh? It was I was just like numb. Each day would go in, and it was just ridiculous. Like there was. It was, yeah, like I said, it felt like I was in a movie. And obviously, long story short, um, the jury found him guilty. Mm. And, yeah, he's gone away for a very long time, thankfully. Question, don't hate me. No, no. You, you ever forgive him? Um, nah. Mm. Nah. Would you? It's always a hard one. It is definitely a hard one. Um, you know, I haven't got I haven't got trauma in that scale to be able to process it. So it's from mm. me from the outside in going possibly maybe depending on the rest of it. Mm. You know, it's a really hard one. I'm, I know, but it's an, it isn't a hard one because I can imagine depending on you going through with your situation, if you've I don't think you finally content to work through it. Like you said, it's three years on his birthday recently. You're still struggling with it. And sometimes mm. people find that um, by accepting it or accepting it as it closes some of those painful doors. Not saying that you should, mm. by all means, it's, it's your own path. But it's just an yeah. interesting one to see what your, your thoughts are that because, you know, a lot of people have said at the end of the day is, you know, by forgiving someone, by, not, by, not, by giving forgiveness but not forgetting might help with the the healing, right? Mm. I get the accepting, Mm -hmm. like accepting that Matt's gone, Mm. Um, even to a point maybe accepting how he went uh, is is probably a part of healing. Um, But nah, not not forgive, Mm -hmm. not forgive. Like that was cold blood, Mm -hmm. like good you know, good versus evil. There was no need for that. The police officers, Matt and David, they were unarmed. Mm -hmm. They were, David was yelling at him, get back in your car and just drive away. Mm -hmm. Like there was no need for that. My mate did not need to die that day. Mm -hmm. And it was because of this person and, how much? Nah, no way. There's no way I could ever forgive him. No way. I, I, to be honest, most of it, apart from like during the court case, because you know he's he's at, um, he's the attention of the of the of the case, mm-hmm. or you know he's he's right there, and and all you know that's all we're talking about. But apart from going through that, I haven't really given him much thought. Um, leading up to it, we just didn't give him much thought. I didn't even know his name mm-hmm. until the court case, which was like a year later, yep. by the way. And since then, I've just kind of said good riddance mm-hmm. and I'm just not, I don't give, yeah, I don't give him the time of day. So I don't feel the need to forgive. Um, I have heard people talk about, you know, forgiving to to move on and mm-hmm. heal or whatever, but Nah, man, I'll find other ways to to heal because <laughs> that's not going to happen. Oh, good, mate. Thought I'd ask the question. Nah, okay. So, so obviously, we're good few years on from that. Um, you know, you're still going through your your moment. You're going through all the rest of it yourself. And obviously, since then, you're starting to pick up. You know, you've got the second win. You've got a podcast, as you said, right? The second win podcast. There's a community behind that. Talk me through, you know, what that is for and what it stands for and where you're trying to go with that now, obviously off the back of, um, um, you know, almost off the back of Matt's, uh, Matt's memory and everything else that you've gone through. Yeah, so so obviously, as we've spoken about, I was in a pretty dark place off mm. the back of um, losing Matt and like most Kiwi blokes, <laughs> they, uh, they kind of, I guess, dig their heels in and, you know, the whole – uh, I'll deal with it on my own yeah. sort of mentality. Um, I didn't go to therapy for ages. Um, and I was like, nah, I'll, I'll figure it out myself. And mm. I found uh, all these other modalities like breath work and meditation mm. and sauna, ice bath, et cetera, um, which most of them I still use today. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, I guess 
they completely changed my life to, mm-hmm. to with no exaggeration. Like I feel like a brand new man and I feel like I was given a second wind in life. Mm. Hence the name. It's a bit cheesy, but, <laughs> um, talking but, about cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <true. laughs> oh, oh, well, that works. Eh? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I honestly felt like I'd been given a second wind mm. and, and, yeah, I guess the loss of mad and finding those um, all these modalities kind of just, I suppose, like highlighted a desire I already have, mm-hmm. already had, sorry, which was to help others with their mental and physical health. So, yeah, since then I've kind of just dove straight into that world. Um, I was working it on the side, mm-hmm. like on the bus on the way to work mm-hmm. and stuff, and then yeah, um, recently left my day job to go full tit into this. And, mm. and yeah, Second Wind has a bit of a community. We've got like a weekly uh, run club, mm. which uh, admittedly is on hold at the moment um, just because the weather is yeah. trash um, and no one wants to get up at 5 a.m. to run in the rain. Um, but that'll come back mm-hmm. um, once we get closer to summer. Uh, yeah, it's got the podcast, like I said, the Second Wind podcast. Mm. Uh, I think I'm about six episodes deep or yeah. something like that. So it's all very new. Um, and then community events as well. Mm. So, um, and that'll involve all the things that I just listed, you know, uh, meditation and, um, breath work and, and then the likes of training and running and even journaling, things yeah. like that. Just to, I suppose it's kind of to, there's kind of two types of people that mm. I'm, I'm focused on. Um, and, and, and one person can fit in both, uh, sorry, both camps, and that is someone who's like really struggling mm-hmm. with their mental and physical health and needs a bit of help. Um, and then someone who just wants to kind of grab life by the balls, yeah. eh? And just sort of pursue a greater self. Anyone anyone that will realize this, I, I've done it a few times, not many, because I think it's batshit crazy. But if you want to understand what life is like, do a cold plunge. Mm. And then you'll realize what life's about, right? Um, I know it's a big thing, and 95% of everyone I've had on the show in the last six months does it actively. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I still don't. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Me and Guy laugh every time we have people on the show. Guy, I think people, my, my audience is going to start saying, Lawrence, you got to get motivated at some stage. <laughs> I've had like the best guys yeah. and girls motivated in the country the last yeah. six months. And, and I'm still sitting there going, nah, stuff nah. it. I ain't going to do anything. Yeah. You know, it is uh, hard. I, yeah. It is hard. Oh, it's, it's hard. And it, it's hard and it's an accepting, right? It's, it's interesting. I, I did a post. Um, on LinkedIn actually last week, um, and I did it across my other social platforms, and it was a photo of me in 2018 before my diagnosis and a photo of me about two months ago when I was speaking at a public school about uh, financial literacy. Mm. 2018 photo, I am literally like 90 kgs in a suit. I looked like I was 21. I yeah. looked like Pimp Daddy. Awesome. <laughs> photo from two months ago, I'm a large mammal, you know. I'm a happy. Large I, I'm a lot, <laughs> right? In front of school and stuff. And you look at oh, it and it, and it looks like it should have, looks like one of those photos that should have been reversed, right? That I should have been the, the large mammal year and then the ripped guy. But what a lot of people don't realize is through that time, I went through my trauma and my brain surgery and all the mm. rest, and my depression and suicide and all the rest of the rest, um, rest of that. Mm. And I found my happy place and content, but no longer chase certain things that are which in twenty eighteen was important. Mm. You know, image and looking good and fitting in and all that other stuff and the ego and the arrogance mm. was was that pure photo. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, I wouldn't mind clicking my fingers and looking, you know, losing thirty kgs. But it's just not that important or drives me anymore. Um and it's always an interesting one to see um finding oneself and one's place. And that's why mm. um I enjoyed what you said is, you know, you can fit in different different places and some people still use different forms of what you're talking about, mm. the med- meditation or journaling or the cold plunge and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I get a bit frustrated where you, I see people on social media going, this is, you've got to do this. Exactly, yeah. Right, like the cold plunge is the big one. You've got to get up in the morning and the cold plunge isn't getting up. And uh, I think I was listening to – so someone like Mark Cuban or something the other day, and he goes, why the fuck would I do it at like 4 o'clock when I get up? He goes, dude, <laughs> yeah. when I'm getting up, he goes, I'm worth a billion already. When I'm getting up, I'm getting stuck <laughs> into my day. I'm doing it. I'm really focused. Yeah. Why do I need to jump in and do a, a goddamn fucking cold plunge? <laughs> yeah. um, I might have wrong if it wasn't Mark Cuban, but it was someone in that vibe. And, he's, and you know, people fit in some places and people don't fit in others, right? Yeah, yeah. It's about finding what works for you as well. Like if you – 
if you don't want to do a cold plunge, that's fine. There's so many other, <laughs> other things. Yeah, man, there's so many. And I think that's kind of a part of Second Wind as well. Mm. Like it's it's a place where people can come and obviously connect with other like-minded people, mm. but try things out, you know, like especially like like things like breath work yep. and, and ice baths, you know, like you don't know until you try it, especially someone like yourself who might be like, oh, nah, fuck that. I'm <laughs> never jumping in an ice bath like you always, you know, you hear people say they're probably the most, they're probably the people who do need to get in. Mm. But yeah, because I'm fat and overweight. But, <laughs> <laughs> but people can be converted, is, yeah. what, is what I was oh, trying to say. Oh, I told you, I'm not, I'm not, not, yeah, yeah well, I'm just saying, yeah, uh, breath work, I fully yeah. support breath work. Yeah. Um, I've been a nasal, 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 nasal breather all my life, and so is my family, and I'm happy about that because I know nice. the benefits from that side. Mm. But also, talking about fitting in, I want to go back in the sense of talking about um, counseling or seeking help or, mm. or sitting down with someone. I know from your story as well, is you had a, uh, a counselor. We say it was some and didn't and it didn't click or didn't work out. Yeah, totally. and was provided the. Research, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I always go for a deep dive, yeah. and I, w- I want to talk about this a little bit because I feel we are slowly getting to community in New Zealand specifically as well, where we are, are we're opening up about talking about our problems mm. and seeking help. But then also I want to talk about the sense of that you did this mm. and the help that you got necessarily wasn't the right fit. Yeah. And therefore we shouldn't go, okay, I've seeked help and accept the first person as well. Mm. Because we got to figure out, as we said before, I don't want to do cold plunges. I'll do breath work. There's certain things that will work for certain people in the right way. Yeah. And counseling um, is one of those things as well. There's not a one fit all for each different person. Mm. Yeah. So talk me through the, uh, you know, the counselor that you went to and it was a bit of a left field vibe to yourself. Yeah. So, yeah, I guess, like I said, um, I tried to take on my grief myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then a year of that um, leads us up to the start of the trial mm-hmm. for the murderer. And just before that, I thought, shit, okay, I'm still in a very dark place. I was like, okay, it's time to go talk to someone. And, you know, get a bit of help or a bit of guidance, Mm -hmm. um, like, through what I know is going to be, you know, extremely tough situation. And so I found someone, I think it was, um, because a lot of workplaces, you can get, like, three for free. Mm -hmm. Um, So I did that. And, yeah, uh, it was, um, I mean, she was a nice enough lady, but it was, yeah, there was a few red flags. Like, she... She offered me drugs mm-hmm. straight away um, within the first session. Yeah. Um, I think I only did one or two sessions. Um, there was another red flag. I can't exactly remember what it was. But, yeah, it just it wasn't the right fit. And I knew that I didn't need pills. Mm-hmm. And I knew, like I'd done, you know, like I said, I'd done all these modalities mm-hmm. and I'd done the research and I knew that pills wasn't the yeah. answer. Um, so so I wasn't happy with that and, and I walked away. Um, I thought, no, nah, I'm not. I'm not carrying on with her, and and then it took me. I think it took another year yeah. to finally go back yeah. um, and find someone else. And that's, and that's unfortunate, right? Because you went and did the right thing mm. in a society that struggles with it, right? We um, New Zealanders uh, or the this this community that lives around this country. I don't want to say New Zealanders because New Zealand's filled with every different country in the world. I'm been one of them, South yeah, African, yeah. right? The uh, this <coughs> this place is and struggles with. The openness, willing to talk, to willing to ask for help, yeah. especially in the male community as well. Totally. Uh, and then you went out, and then uh, it didn't fit, mm. and 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 that's a bit of a shit one. Um, yeah. But I'm but I'm happy now that you know you went back and you you find your place, um, and you you getting you getting your help. And I know you talk quite openly about your counselling, and totally, man. Um, because by talking openly about it, it allows other people to go, oh, it's normal, right? Mm. It's it's so maybe it's something I can do and everything else because. We do get in, we do get in situations where we need a person to guide us, mm. you know. In the business, in in this world of behind a camera, I I need people to guide me to how to mm. how do I do this? I've got I've got guys, my producer helping me. I've got other mentors that help me in the business world. Yeah. Why in life and why in stuff that goes on in here that sometimes I don't understand. Why wouldn't we do the same thing, right? Yeah, and ask people exactly. to help us. Yeah, exactly. We all heard the saying, you know, like if you sprain an ankle, you you don't hesitate to go see a physiotherapist. Yeah. But as soon as, you know, you're struggling with your mental health, like 
why are we so, you know, why are we so hesitant mm-hmm. to go seek help? And, and like you were just saying, like the power of experts, the yeah. power of people with these knowledge, you know, like, like, um, our producer here or for myself, um, I use a triathlon coach, mm-hmm. um, and my training and, and the results have just gone next level, you mm-hmm. know, and, and, um, psychology or, um, or therapy, whatever yeah. you want to call it is, is no different. Yeah. So true. I want to ask you now is, so you, you, you spoken about, you know, being on the edge, hot headedness, a little bit of stuff. Okay. What do you do when you, when, when that, when that flame builds up or that fire gets in you? Yeah. Like in the uh, moment, uh, in the moment, do you, mm. do you have control of it? Do you have recognition of it in, in today's world? Um, yeah, at times, like it's, it, if I look back um, and can compare myself to mm-hmm. three years ago, like it's, I'm 10 times better yep. or, or more. Um, I'm definitely, yeah, I'm, I'm a, I'm a different person. Mm-hmm. Like I'm, I'm less, uh, I feel less tension in my neck. Yep. Um, but yeah, like I'm still human and I still have moments and unfortunately kind of like what you said, it's, it's mostly <laughs> with my kids and my mm-hmm. wife, like they're, they're the ones who, who cop the anger or cop the grumpiness. Mm-hmm. Um, so in the moment, my, so my wife, is, you have to have the conversation with your partner. Mm-hmm. Um, they have to understand um, that first of all, you're recognizing it and you want to make a change. Um, and to do that, yeah, they need to understand as well because in a moment where, you know, whatever, um, one of the kids smacks the other kid or whatever, you know, anything that sets you off, mm-hmm. let's say, um, if you can say, babe, I just need 10 minutes. Like, can you please just handle the kids? Yeah. They need to be understanding that, that you're trying to grow. You're trying to improve. You're mm-hmm. not trying to just, you know, ditch the kids and leave them with the wife. Yep. And then you, and then this is what I do. I take myself off and use one of those modalities. It's usually um, breath work mm-hmm. and or a cold shower because yep. it's quick and I find it super effective to calm me down. You know, it, it taps me into my back to my parasympathetic mm-hmm. nervous system. Yep. Um, do you ever do the cold pl- uh, cold face plunge? Just that, you know, they're talking about um, do you, uh, that if you do a if you just do a, uh, your basin or anything on a bowl of yeah. water and you do this just to your face straight mm. into ice water, it has an instant reaction of bringing down uh, blood pressure and your anxiety levels without doing the big full thing. Mm. So it's like almost like a a, a smaller yeah. chip or version. Yeah, and that's and targeting. That, yeah, yeah, targeting. But it's just it's an, a, a, because it's to the head as well. Your body actually also brings everything back to the. Um, back into the inside of the core because of things that there's almost like a trauma to the head. So right. it, just, it just controls everything. Right. So that's why if you think of um, if in the mornings, like a lot of times I will go and take, um, you know, I uh, the water that's freezing cold at the moment and I'll take that and go straight onto the face right. and that'll just do like that big – but then it, again, it's a very small version of a cold plunge. Yeah, but there yeah. is that sort of mechanisms you can do as well, and it's quite easy. And it's also a lot of times, um, um, not doctors of uh, people do it when they want a reaction out of uh, from first line responders. Uh, right. You know, oh, to, yeah, yeah, yeah they'll do the, yeah, yeah, they'll yeah. the cold plunge and just uh, give your body a bit of a, yeah. a jolt. Yeah, yeah. No, I've never done just the face. Eh? I'll, yeah. I'll always just jump right in the shower or or, yeah. in, or in an ice bath. I've, I'm one of those lunatics who's turned a chest freezer into yeah. a nice bath. Why? So why, just as a side note, mm. anyone that's listening out here, and if you do it, I want 1%. Why is there no company yet that has now, instead of us all buying these chest freezers and buying yeah. the silicone and sealing it all, right? Yeah, why is yeah. no, I know there's the blow up ones, yeah. but why aren't we getting a- Nah, they're starting to they're come starting, I was going to say, because yeah, yeah. man, there's so many guys yeah. that's doing the, the chest freezers yeah. Yeah. and siliconing and just running those yeah, instead yeah. of just building it straight off the bat. Uh, yeah, uh, nah, they're starting to come in like and, and like with the filter system yeah. and like temperature control and stuff. I'm actually, next week, I'm going <laughs> to see a company called Found Space. Yeah. Little shout out for you. <laughs> I'm going to see them and uh, hopefully- uh, do a little deal with them or something and get one in, in my that, pad. That's cool. I'll, I'll cut that up and put on the story so I can tag them directly, yeah, right? And yeah, just, a, yeah, <laughs> just a bit of a short I love that. A shout out to yeah. that one, right? <laughs> um, no, that's awesome. You know, that's awesome on that one. Um, so just take me through the, you know, what's the what's the vision from year forward, from today forward and everything else for mm-hmm. audience? You know, we've spoken through what you've gone through and everything else, but w- what's next? Yeah, it's a tough question to answer, mm-hmm. eh? Um, 
because I obviously do forward think um, and plan. Uh, I've only started doing that recently, hmm. but at the same time, I kind of I live very presently at the moment, and and I'm kind of, I guess, pivoting where I need to, and and kind of rolling with the punches mm-hmm. in a way. But yeah, I guess I'm happy with my life at the moment. I'm happy with uh, the career path that I'm on, mm-hmm. and, and the way everything's developing. So. So yeah, the next sort of five years, I'll just continue to work on Second Wind and mm. and grow the podcast and grow the community and and get you know um, do more events and get more people along to the events. Um, and then I suppose the big dream would be to uh, see. I, I'm I'm one of those guys who just has so many ideas, <laughs> but you know they're saying like you can do anything you want, but you can't do everything you want. I <laughs> uh, really struggle with that day eh? because I just want to do everything. So. Yeah, I could, I could see myself maybe going down the retreats angle, yep. um, and then and uh, definitely coaching. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm actually I've got a uh, consultation on Friday. Someone's uh, reached out to me and wanted to do some coaching with me. So, so definitely coach coaching involved. And yeah, I suppose the big dream would be to open my own space, um, mm-hmm. sort of like a health, fitness, wellness combined space. Um, where it's all in one. You know, you yep. can come. You've got your gym. You've got your sauna. You've got your ice bath. Uh, maybe even therapy, mm-hmm. physiotherapy, like all in one kind of, you know, like a massive sort of, I suppose, YMCA style, mm-hmm. you know, the ones they have in America where yeah. it's just got everything and you can even, I don't know, you can sit down with maybe someone like myself mm-hmm. and, um, I don't know, just just chat or yep. write goals or just collaborate. I don't know. Maybe there's a podcast studio. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no yeah. challenges, no. This is this yeah. is the studio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, of course, of course. Yes. Um, talk coaching. Uh, it's yeah. one of the it's one of the words I most dislike in the industry at the moment. Oh yeah. yeah. The reason being because too many people out there call themselves a coach with mm. absolutely no experience or understanding of what it, uh, what it needs. Um, mm. um, I had old big Dave Dave Neathy on the show a good few months ago, and he talks about congruent coaching. Uh, where it is, where it's coaching from experience and understanding, mm. compared to coaching from a book. Mm. Um, and he's been in the coaching industry. I already say, without giving out his age, it's almost coming up to three decades now. One of the lo- longest in New Zealand, right? High performance coaching, and everything else. So, a question I wanted to ask you is, you know, going on the coaching, where did you see, you know, what sort of, you know, knowledge or qualifications? Because you know, there's NLP, there's yeah. all that sort of stuff going on. Yeah. What's your thoughts around that? Because I have a big thing about this is going to sound weird. Mm. I go and sit and do a one month or one week or a one day or a fucking one hour qualification yeah. and now I'm a coach. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, now yeah. I want to tell you how you should be doing shit yeah, yeah, with, yeah. you know, with a no real understanding. Now, look, I'm not going to say that's going to be a way. I know your story and everyone's heard it yeah. and, you know, you're going through that sort of stuff. But I'm just yeah. quite interested to know when people go, oh, I want to get into coaching, mm. what's that sort of – how does what that, does that what, is, what does it mean to you? Yeah, yeah. I suppose I, I obviously I can't speak for anyone else. Like mm. there, there. I, I guess you're right. Like the term coach is rather ambiguous, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and and especially nowadays, people yeah. are slapping on holistic coach and, and health coach, yeah. but they're all doing it in different ways and mm-hmm. stuff. But yeah, I don't know. I I think it's I think it's good. I think it's good that there's lots of people out there trying to help others. Mm-hmm. Um, and as long as they're genuine and long as they're you know they're 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 really trying to help yep. others, and and they've got knowledge that they can pass on. You know, not like not like some fitness influencers that just sell <laughs> like fucking twelve week programs that yep. you know Chat GPT wrote up for them, and and selling products that they don't even use and yep. stuff like that. Like that, you know, like that sort of grinds my gear. But but for me, um, yeah, I suppose I'll massively be taking my experience and the mm-hmm. shit that I've gone through. Um, to help others and and all the modalities that I've learnt, um, I can I can provide. Um, like at my house, I've got a sauna, ice bath, yep. and, a, and a gym set up. So so when people come around, you know, I've got the facilities right there. Um, and and yeah, I'll, I'll continue to upskill. Um, I've just finished a breathwork course. Mm-hmm. Um, when I uh, towards the end of the year, I'm going to start a PT course. Yep. Um, and just get like a nice broad knowledge of it all. Um, and yeah, for me, like, I'll, I guess it's just about staying authentic mm-hmm. and staying transparent and, and not trying to pretend 
like I know it all or, yeah. or pretend like uh, I'm something I'm not, um, I suppose. Yeah. No, that's awesome. It's a great answer. As we get to the end of today's show, uh, Regan, anything you want to leave us with? Oh, um, drop that one on me. <laughs> um, anything? Um, any thoughts, any insights, anything that's, you know, for someone out there that's having a listen or watch at the moment? Uh, I guess, yeah, one of the things I always try and inspire people to do is is just sit back for a sec. And when I say that, I mean like in life, you know, mm. sit back and and take a glance at the life you've created. And like, do you love it? Mm-hmm. Do you fucking froth it? Yeah. If you do, great. But if you don't, mm-hmm. you know, question that or or – um, and, and then maybe seek out, you know, something that does light you up, or maybe you're already doing something that lights you up, you know, grab more of that. Mm-hmm. And if you can make it your career, yeah. especially nowadays with technology and social media and stuff, you can make fucking anything your, <laughs> your career, just like we're talking about off air with the mugs, Yeah, you know, <laughs> mug life. shout out Gary V mug life. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I guess my message is to just. Do what you love. Mm-hmm. Grab life by the balls and just fucking go for it. Uh, that's awesome. Thanks for that, uh, Regan. Where can we find you? Uh, Instagram or TikTok, uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, underscore Regan Green, or you can uh, hear more of me on the Second Wind podcast. Awesome. Thanks so much for that, Regan. And to everyone else, as, well, as always, thanks for coming over to the Wolf of Queen Street podcast. As I always say at the end of the show, I'm not, I'm not going to say, you know, like and subscribe and all those sort of weird things. That's not important to me. What is is about Regan's message, about what he's trying to bring out and share to the community. And if there's someone else that's also going through maybe what he has gone through, the trauma, the loss, or needs to try and learn from a few steps is just, as I always say, make up some weird excuse to say, hey, there's this real funny video of this really fat guy, Lawrence and Regan, right? And come watch the video and maybe they learn from it, right? Because sometimes the help we need, we don't necessarily know we need it. and We need to stumble on it by someone else pushing us along the way. But as always, you know, I um, hope we can help the world, the bigger and wider community out there. And as always, thanks for coming to the show and hope to see you again.